Welcome back to Point Blank and tonight we're on the hot topic of by-elections in Malaysia in the in the rural constituency of Pematang Pau. Well, our Razor TV team is actually right there in the heart of the action in this little town. Uh, Malaysian correspondent Ahiruddin Atan was actually trapped in a two-hour traffic jam before he could even get from one polling station to another. Let's find out what happened. Uh, it's uh, about 10.30 in the morning now. We have been uh, trapped in this uh, jam, look at that, uh, for the last nearly two hours. We are on the way to this place called Kubang Semang. That's where Anwar was supposed to have uh, cast his vote at about 9 in the morning. Uh, we are inching, we are crawling uh, to, to that little town. I think we're just about five kilometers, less than five kilometers away from where we want to be, but it's going to take hours and hours. And we can't turn back because the jam is both ways. Uh, but this morning, uh, we managed to get uh, uh, the Barisan National candidate, Arif, Omar, Arif, Arif Shah, Omar Shah, uh, who cast his vote at Sabrang uh, Jaya about uh, 8 a.m. He was the first. In fact, he was the first to crash the gate and uh, cast his vote. Uh, I suppose because uh, that that signified the importance of this uh, by-election uh, for the Barisan National, as well as. Uh, if not more important for Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, uh, who's uh, making a comeback to uh, Parliament. Uh, yeah, this by-election uh, in Malaysia is uh, you know, considered small election, minor election, but there's, there is nothing small with uh, Pematang Pau by-election uh, because uh, the opposition uh, basically oh, are moving a bit. The uh, opposition is uh, basically uh, banking on this uh, by-election to get Anwar Ibrahim back into parliament. And uh, in 20 days, that is uh, by September 16, uh, Dr. Sri Anwar is uh, supposed to uh, announce a new government with the help of uh, crossovers uh, to the opposition, uh, Pakatan Raya by uh, involving BN or Barisan National uh, MPs. Uh, the voters, uh, there will be about uh, 58, more than 58,000 voters will uh, cast their votes uh, throughout the day until about 5 p.m. And we'll know the results uh, earliest, uh, about 8 uh, p.m. tonight. Uh, this is a big, big day for Komatang Pau people. Um, we'll know in a few hours uh, whether there is um, going to be the dawn of a new Malaysia, as uh, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim said in his uh, campaigns, or whether he's uh, this underdog uh, uh, from Barisan National. If it's, he could be creating, if he wins this by election, he would be creating one of the biggest uh, upsets uh, in Malaysian uh, election history. Well, it seems like all the voters mm -hmm. there are just quite keen to have their say. Yeah. Uh, you know, the turnout is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fifty-eight thousand. Oh. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah, and we may be able to break the news. You know, of the latest polling results. Who well, knows? You could catch it on <laughs> Point Blank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Wee, we yes. were just uh, saying just now how important the September 16 mark is. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned how historically important it is, but do you think, in your opinion, that Anwar is much too bold, uh, whether it's premature for him to set such a deadline? Is it, you know, unrealistic? Mm. Uh, well, a lot of people have wondered why he keeps saying this all the time if he actually has 30, 40 people who are mm -hmm. going to cross over. Then why just why not just keep quiet and wait for the day and then <laughs> spring it on the world, you know? Um, but the fact that he does keep saying it tells me that he actually does not have thirty yet. But mm. uh, this is part of the the process of getting thirty. Okay. So he keeps saying, "Yeah, I've got thirty, I've got thirty. Oh. and then perhaps you say, "Well, I've got twenty-nine. You're the thirtieth. Are you joining or not?" Mm -hmm. oh. I say, "You're the okay. first. You're not." <laughs> That's the second thing to uh, think about. Something yeah. like that. Oh. Um, 
But even if he were to manage to, you know, convince 30 people to mm. cross mm. over, mm. would a government that's formed by defections like this have the moral authority to rule Malaysia? Yeah. The moral authority? Mm -hmm. uh, well, if we, if we think of the fact that, we, if we look at Barisan again, mm -hmm. it, it's actually, it's been so stable, we've forgotten that it's actually a coalition. Mm -hmm. And um, anywhere in the, world, in the world, coalitions do shift. Mm -hmm. So if Malaysia were a more mature democracy, if I could use that, mm -hmm. that term, then uh, parties moving about is nothing strange. Mm -hmm. It's nothing strange at all. But uh, in, in Malaysia, it becomes you know, a matter of life and death and all that. <laughs> Uh, so let's say if the MCA decides, no, it's, it's mm -hmm. time for us to move on, it's better for Malaysia if Pakatan riot rules, and they move over. In, in some other country, that would be quite okay. It's not a moral problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think it's a moral okay. problem here, mm -hmm. really. Uh, we have had people from Gerakan, for example, uh, showing that they actually support the DAP in Penang, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, they are accused of being disloyal and all that. And, well, I'm thinking of... Uh, Tolkien Woon, is to Tolkien Woon, mm -hmm. Dato, uh, who actually did that. He's, he's siding with Anwar for in, in these by elections. And his mm -hmm. reply to this, and I agree with, I agree with him, is that he's not being disloyal. He's he's being he's actually being he's actually keeping to his principles. And he mm -hmm. sees now that the DAP is standing for those principles. He joined Gerakan for. Mm -hmm. Now, if you feel like that, then then you're actually being being uh, honest to your okay. to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So. One has to look at that as well. The parties must not be an end in themselves. The, the Barisan or PR mm -hmm. must not be an end in themselves. Okay. Uh, we are talking about you know making the country mature and developing and having a fair society, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. And looking at the card that mm -hmm. Anwar is playing, uh, BN is criticizing that you know his announcement that he has got 30, 40 Barisan national uh, uh, people going over or to his side. That you know he's just playing psychological war games. So. Well, what do you think of that? Well, it's politics as well, I suppose. <laughs> I'm not a politician, so I, I just study mm -hmm. and, and sometimes am amazed at what politicians are capable of doing or need to do, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, I know that there's been a lot of uh, accusations of Anwar being untrustworthy and all that. And my response to that is, of course, okay, who's more trustworthy? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> okay, Just because someone's it? already in power, he's more trustworthy than someone who's trying to get into power. You mm -hmm. know? History yeah, has not proved that to mm -hmm. be so, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I, don't, I don't give much, much right. attention to that, that kind of, of uh, arguments. Mm -hmm. on, the other hand, uh, on the other hand, one has to also look at, uh, be beyond the personality, Najib on one side, or Abdullah mm -hmm. and Anwar on the other, and Kit Lim Kitsiang and all that. It's also they are also representative of a certain movement, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Uh, so Anwar today and Anwar in the old days would be different because the support is different. He represents different things, and the people he represents would would mould him, as it were. Mm -hmm. The person who comes to power on a certain wave cannot mm -hmm. deny that wave. Yeah. So uh, in, you know so. Yeah, that's an interesting that's point, Dr. Wee. We have a comment on our web right now by Blue mm -hmm. Blazer. Okay, he says, maybe the cards have turned to ace on Anwar's favour. One thing for sure, 20 years of card playing, let's not forget that one of Ziza's sacrifices were indeed, uh, has it made Anwar's success story come to life? And it might as well happen. So you're mentioning how, you know, uh, Anwar of the old is not the same as Anwar of you know, of the present. Mm -hmm. So wh what's the essential difference, you know, for yourself? Uh, because he represents different things. Mm -hmm. He used to be part of the Mahathir regime. Mm -hmm. uh, and now perhaps a lot of people want to forget this. But in the 1990s, early 1990s, Mahathir did have a lot of support from all sorts of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, a lot of things need to be criticised about that period and all that. Uh, Anwar today is, is at the head of something mm -hmm. else. That is what we should look at, and not always look at the personality. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a man who's been through six years in jail and all that. So uh, uh, mm -hmm. this this thing about dishonesty, hidden agenda, okay, <laughs> <laughs> just leaves me. I, I just don't get it. I just don't get yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. And although Datuk Seri Anwar is mm -hmm. pretty confident, you know, of, of, of toppling BN with his September mm -hmm. 16 deadline and all, yeah. well, um, he has also voiced his concerns about the electoral list. Uh, it seems to be incomplete with a substantial number of PKR supporters removed 
and missing other ne- names included. Yeah, yes. I wonder what those Pretty names are. Pretty interesting twists <laughs> of events. Well, let's hear what Dato Anwar himself has to say about this in person. Dato Sri, okay. just just to just to get an uh, just this for internet TV. You're, you we're having you for the first time on internet TV. Uh, just to give a take, just less than 24 hours before the big day. Was as have things uh, gone on as you planned? Well, I'm encouraged by the level of support, not only in our trauma, but also in terms of volunteers coming in to help work. Uh, but uh, we are now very concerned about the latest development, about the, the list, list and yeah. the electoral list. The list of uh, the missing list? The missing, uh... No, uh, the electoral list normally is standard rule. Uh, practiced by the election commission is that mm. the li- only the gazetted list. Mm-hmm. Now they are using what they call an updated list, not verified by the okay. parties. Yeah. Uh, 1,000 of our uh, voters right now is from missing, 1,000 new edition, 500, uh, 300 odd new postal votes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is, of course, a concern to us. Okay. But, um, we are still assuming that you will uh, get through. Um, uh, what would be the first thing you do in uh, in Parliament? A lot of people want to do that. Well, the first item I think following the you know, election will be the budget. So okay. I think we'll have to work on um, the budget uh, on the how to respond to Abdullah's uh, budget speech. And we have you have uh, about twenty days before September sixteen. Yes. We are still keeping that date. Uh, one week is a long time. Politics, you got to be careful. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sri. So you're saying you're on track? Yes. Yeah. Definitely on track. Very confident, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. He is has it? to appear that way as well. Okay. We have a very nice web comment here mm-hmm. from Little Kid. Okay, he said, if Anwar is to win this election, how is the government going to handle the sodomy case? Something that, you know, is a cloud <laughs> hanging over him all the time. Yeah, and considering that there has been rumours and accusations ongoing that the government has intervened in judicial matter in the past, will there be an overwhelming pressure on the government that if they will to uh, ever convict Anwar, it could be seen as a move to oust Anwar from his political career? Mm. So what's your take on that, Dr. Mm. Uh, I think most people think this is political. Uh, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. hard for me not to see it as political. Um, and it is a crisis. It is okay. a crisis. And I'm sure Anwar knows it and his camp knows it. And uh, they're fighting against time. And uh, one Aziza was mentioned earlier. And yes, wonderful woman, right? Who, who sacrificed a lot for the, for the family and for her mm-hmm. husband. Uh, it was because of the sodomy charge, the second one here, mm-hmm. that uh, forced the hand of Anwar and his camp, I think, and forced. Uh, was the decision that one Aziza should step down very quickly and force a by-election on the government. And this is what we see, uh, hidden cards, you know. Uh, even if we see the cards, we're not sure what the game is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. it, it always takes some, some time. Uh, and the next move might, might change your interpretation of things. Um, mm, so there is a crisis, they know okay. it. Uh, BN is moving. The sodomy charge is really serious, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, if whether the trial is going to be fair or not. If he gets convicted, that means he loses his new one position. Mm-hmm. He has to okay. give this up again, you know, mm-hmm. back to square one, 1998 all over mm-hmm. again. Um, I'm, I, I hope that history does, history does repeat itself, but not that, you know, okay. not that often. <laughs> okay. um, mm-hmm. It is a crisis and it, it's hard to see how we're going to solve this. Things are coming to a head. And I think that's part of the game as well. Uh, the Anwar camp and the opposition is, is pushing it to, to it to the to the end game, I suppose. Okay. And we end a faltering giant, if you put it that way. And per- okay. perhaps using that term, we can more we can better understand uh, its its actions. Okay. It is a falling giant. Uh, mm-hmm. It's or at least badly wounded by March eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, many of its component parts are dropping away. You know. Okay. And uh, dropping off. Some yeah. dropping mm-hmm. off. Okay. Uh, quite useless, some of them at the moment. I don't know why they don't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, what does a giant, faltering giant do? You know, it, it's not going to just lie down and die. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will do all it can to stay in, to um, to continue. Uh, perhaps certain certain members of that of mm-hmm. that giant would would do all it can to to regain 
uh, former glory and all that. Okay. And uh, so a, a yeah. crisis is building up, definitely. Okay. And since Anwar is taking a risk by entering the by-election, do you think it's actually more strategic for him to remain as an advisor to PKR and let his wife, you know, remain in the parliament? Yeah, rather get into, mm-hmm. rather than, you know, getting, getting into, into the, the risk of the yeah. action himself. Going back to square one again. Um, mm-hmm. Well, first, uh, different points to look at here. Mm-hmm. First, the, the Pakatan Rayat wouldn't exist without him mm-hmm. because the, the component parts are actually quite different. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, if you look at the ideology of the parties, the three yeah. parties in this, the DAP and PKR are quite mm-hmm. close in many mm-hmm. ways, uh, ideologically yeah, in, in their <laughs> yeah, uh, multiracialism and all that. Past is quite different. Mm-hmm. And Anwar has somehow managed to bridge that. Because mm-hmm. in past, this is important as well, I'd like to get this in before time runs out. The reformacy movement that started in 1998, I think we, we can in a way see it maturing now. Many of those people who are now mm-hmm. in parliament, uh, through PKR, through DAP, you will see that they are 30, 35, that kind of age. This, this is a generation, though they are not many, mm-hmm. who were, in, who were an inspired by the reformacy. Mm-hmm. Movement, yep. and so in a sense, we see a, a maturing of the reformacy movement, and that is, that is that momentum that I think supporters of of PR at the moment see. Mm-hmm. They know they know all the problems and all that, but they see this as a, a mm-hmm. historical mm-hmm. Uh, creature mm-hmm. moving against a rather uh, <laughs> outmoded system that that uh, that has become too corrupted. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we have many more questions for Dr. Wei, I'm sure. And if you have any questions, as many as we have, you mm-hmm. know, call us as M- MMS is email us, contact us any way you like, or just comment. Well, um, right after, after the, the break, break, okay, we'll hear from Anwar's opponent, Arif Omar Shah. In fact, we are going to have our Malaysian correspondent Ahirudin Atan uh, to call us live from Pematang Pau as well. So stay tuned for that because we're going to hear from the man live. After the break.